How are you marking Pride Month this year? While LGBTQIA plus people around the world are deprived of basic safety, not protected by laws, preyed on by hate groups online and offline. She looks familiar. Discriminated against at work, deprived of opportunities and pushed to the margins. But pride can be found etched deeply in the hand of a friend. We all must stand together with queer folks online, at work, in schools, in sport, through laws, everywhere. We call to protect the pride. Are you with us? No, I most definitely am not with you, Oxfam, and I will quite likely never be, I'm afraid. <clears throat> I just want to start this video, this unscripted video, by saying that it is very important, I think, in all of this to make a very clear distinction between ideology and people. When ideology is prioritised over people, there is a huge problem and that never works and never ends well. It hasn't ended well historically and it most definitely isn't going to end well contemporarily. What is happening now with a lot of businesses for understandable reasons because they just make a lot of money from it is that they are adopting ideological positions because they are ultimately trying to attract Gen Z toward their products, toward their charities, toward their business ventures. But when this is done at the expense of people it is so important for people to speak out on this because what Oxfam has done and is doing is truly deplorable. Now, in the same way that I distinguish generically between ideology and people, I distinguish profoundly and very, very clearly between trans ideology, LGBTQ plus whatever ideology and LGBTQ plus whatever people and trans people. Two very different categories of interests and of human beings. And ideology of course has a place. It's important in order to make people feel like they are protected, that they are represented, that their existence and that their belief has an outlet. Ideas are ultimately what we see as making the world a better place. It's what we look for in pursuit of progress. But what has regrettably happened is that ideology is being prioritised over people. Ideology and what it stands for and the power that it has in this day and age is now overshadowing people and it's overshadowing the very people who need that ideology to help them with the real everyday issues that they have. Trans people who can't get housing, trans people who are living in abusive and unsafe situations and circumstances, trans people the majority of whom are by people that they know, by intimate partner violence. Not by hate crime, not by people in their everyday life who just want biological sex to be recognised for understandable reasons because it matters to them, and I get it. But instead, ideologies are now representing people, diverse, multifaceted, individual people who either don't subscribe to the ideology at all or subscribe to a plethora of ideologies and opinions and perspectives and politics, just like myself. And that does a disservice to those people. It does a disservice to those people because then inevitably everybody lumps the ideologues and the ideology with the people and therefore reduces trans people, reduces LGBTQ plus people, reduces black people, reduces women, what have you, to merely that one thing, that one idea and identity. And we don't get anywhere with that. We get to a world in which today, regrettably, Oxfam thinks it's acceptable to caricature JK Rowling as a turf, a derogatory term used for women who believe that biology is paramount and sacrosanct, who believe in protecting the rights of biological women, etc. Now, would I have a problem with this in general? No, not really. This is just the way of the world now. Everybody is is screaming turf or screaming trans PDF file or what have you. It's just what people do regrettably to absolutely no avail and no help for anybody at all. But I digress. The reason why I think this is so important to talk about is because Oxfam is a perfect example of a corporation, a charity, an entity, a business taking on an ideology without actually giving a about that ideology. Oxfam, I'm so sorry, Oxfam doesn't give a f about trans people. Oxfam doesn't give a f 
about LGBTQ plus people. Oxfam doesn't give a f about women. Oxfam gives a f about making its executives, making its primary aid workers, its top aid workers feel like they're doing some good in the world for poor brown people. And lo and behold, these ideologues who are on the side of progress have fallen into this trap because Oxfam is saying what they want them to say. Oxfam is saying what all the companies today in our advanced economies are saying, which is the progressive message, not because they in any way care about progress, not because they in any way care about equality or about ethics and morals. They just care about making money from the new up and coming demographic of market based consumers, Gen Z. And I know this is hard for a lot of Gen Zers to hear, myself included as a Gen Z individual, but we are regrettably a very confusing demographic of consumers and we are ultimately hypocrites. We want convenience and ease, yet at the same time we hate and loathe fast fashion, we hate and loathe everything that has anything to do with Amazon and all the means of getting things very quickly to our front door. We have absolutely no money yet we like to spend big. We can't afford to buy a house but we'll happily invest in businesses if they are on the side of pride, if they are on the side of black people, what have you. Any marginalized group that is not seemingly represented very well, they are on board and they will happily take your money and we will happily give them our money because we believe that they are better than all other businesses. To be on the side of the perpetual victim, to be on the side of the minority today for businesses is not a matter of anything to do with ethics. It's purely about wearing a badge of honor and wearing a badge that says that they are superior to everyone else. It's sanctimony branding and it's sanctimony profiting. And because sadly online we are so subsumed in our own sanctimony about every little detail that works and sells beautifully. And it also shows how businesses can't read a room. Regrettably, what businesses and these companies and charities find themselves in is a world in which people increasingly are online and these companies are getting their information and their idea of who to sell to from the internet. They're not going out into the real world. They're not looking for what people are actually talking about or what people actually care about. Everything is virtual. All their information and consulting is virtual. And so they think that they are doing what the people want. But as the comments show, 99.99999% of which are most definitely not on the side of Oxfam on this, you cannot judge people by social media profiles and their social media presence because that is not people in any shape or form. And so obviously it is that time of year, Pride Month, Happy Pride Month to anybody who is celebrating and to anybody and everybody who needs this. I know it is very important to a lot of LGBTQ plus people out there and I completely respect that. It doesn't mean anything to me in the same way that Black History Month means absolutely nothing to me. If they give you a month, you know that they do not care. I'm so sorry. That's just my opinion, but I know it means a lot to people and so I completely and utterly respect that. But from my perspective, it is merely a way for businesses to make more money through selling you things that you do not need with a gimmick of moral sanctimony, which they do not have at all. It is merely a way for Oxfam to keep their charity stores open and running. All of their charity stores where I live are branded with pride flags and they have been for weeks now. They want to attract new consumers. They want to attract new donors, new donations, and it is all the rave. So why am I so pissed off at Oxfam for this? Well, I'm pissed off with Oxfam because of what Oxfam represents. In 2018, Oxfam was exposed for the most heinous, and I mean the most heinous, sexual exploitation scandal that we've probably seen in the modern world when it comes to charities and international aid work. Now, not only did Oxfam know that two of its top executives and aides were paying for sex with underaged girls and women, vulnerable women in Haiti, in completely devastated, impoverished Haiti. It tried to cover it up. Now, this actually involved many 
staff who were based in Haiti at the time. I think there were about 293, I read somewhere recently, based in Haiti at the time. The country director, Roland van Hyver Maven, or whatever his name is, had to resign because he and other staff partook in and organized orgies. Yes, orgies. It was also revealed that Roland von Hyver Maven, or whatever his name is, engaged in the same kind of activity by employing sex workers in Chad in 2006. Oxfam also allowed one of its senior aid workers to stay in Haiti for over a year after he had been reported for sexual misconduct and sexual harassment of women and girls. On June 14, 2020, Haiti announces it is withdrawing Oxfam, Great Britain's or GB's right to operate in the country for violation of Haitian law and serious violation of the principle of the dignity of the human beings. Oxfam had its funding suspended for that. And it gets worse. I did not think it could get worse, but oh boy, did it get worse. Oxfam had their funding yet again suspended in 2021. Oxfam suspended two members of staff and 11 members of staff were hit with allegations in the Democratic Republic of Congo for sexual exploitation yet again against women and young girls. If you didn't know, the Democratic Republic of the Congo is already designated or nicknamed the world's sexual exploitation capital. Now at the moment, especially online, the term TERF is used to refer to predominantly women who believe in biological sex, who ultimately believe that women are women and trans women are trans women. And I genuinely mean that because right now to hold that opinion is to be associated with individuals who are actual extremists and are actual transphobes, namely people who don't believe that trans people exist, people who don't believe that trans people deserve to be treated like human beings with rights, and people who understand that there is of course a distinction between predatory men who are going to go into, for instance, women's spaces to exploit and harass and abuse women and trans people. There is a whole melting pot of people with their different beliefs, their different ideals, etc. But for all of them to be lumped into this very derogatory and incredibly useless term of TERF does a disservice to actually helping people and vulnerable groups within the LGBTQ plus community. And Oxfam in all its glory has just made that a little bit more difficult. For Oxfam to quite literally tell people how they ought to think, what they ought to do, telling them whether they are on the right or the wrong side of history effectively is disgusting. For it to caricature JK Rowling, who irrespective of what you think of her, means a lot to a lot of women, to a lot of children, a lot of young girls, who is a role model to a lot of people. To paint her as a villain, somebody responsible for discrimination against marginalized groups, is terrible. It's terrible because it is the perfect example of Oxfam deflecting blame for its own misdemeanors. Because who did Oxfam blame for its sexual exploitation scandals in Haiti, in the DRC and Chad. Of course it wasn't going to blame Oxfam, the culture that Oxfam had established. It wasn't going to blame any of its own people. No, it decided to blame white feminists. Because according to Oxfam, white supremacy and hence white feminism is to blame for ethnic minorities, namely black and brown people who are majority populations in their countries, being exploited and not being taken seriously for claims of sexual exploitation. White women in the West use their white woman tears and their white privilege in order to ultimately undermine any prospect of ethnic minorities, black and brown people being believed for their hardships, their problems. That is exactly what Oxfam did when it had a training course in order to try and establish a better culture in terms of its international aid. Oxfam produced a training guide for its staff after the Haiti scandal in which, like I said, white feminism was blamed for the ills of their staff. White feminism was blamed for a middle-aged Belgian white man 
a 12 year old child. A book that was recommended to everybody taking this guide or course was a book called Me Not You, The Trouble with Mainstream Feminism. One of the slides from the guide and PowerPoint that was used during this training session and course reads as follows. Me Not You asks, what violence can we do in the name of fighting sexual violence? We means privileged white woman. In a world shifting further right in which white White woman safety is a political football. White feminists need to ask this. Mainstream feminism centers privileged white women as victims and demands that bad men be fired or imprisoned. Bad men, such as this man, such as the men who engaged in orgies with vulnerable women and underage girls, such as the men who continued this culture and pattern of exploitation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and sexually abused and bullied women and young girls who they were meant to be protecting, who they were meant to be saving. And this is a perfect example yet again when you take ideology and place it before people, when you place ideology ideology before human beings and their everyday real lives. Because ideals and ideologies are not people, they are merely ideas. And you can regrettably use ideas in order to deflect from human agency, from human beings doing deplorable, disgusting things. You can blame white feminism and privileged white women for bad men exploiting young brown and black girls and women in a foreign country. And you you can get away with it. And then a few years down the line, you can do a lovely little rebrand during Pride Month and tell women, white women specifically, that they are TERFs, that they are bad people, that they are responsible for the discrimination against marginalized groups, against the poor, against people who can't feed their families, people who are unsafe. Because believe it or not, it is not merely trans people who are living in precarious times. What about these women and girls in Haiti? What about these women and girls in the Democratic Republic of the Congo? What about these women and girls in Chad? What about working class women and girls in advanced economies? What about women who didn't take gender studies at university and therefore don't care or know about all this lingo around gender and gender identity? This outsources perpetrators from elite industries and legitimates criminal punishment, harming black and other marginalized people. Disregard for marginalized people becomes hostility when they get in the way. Just like how Oxfam put aside and disregarded marginalized people in third world countries. In the end, Me Not You argues mainstream feminism is supporting, not undoing, the root causes of sexual violence. The audacity to blame white feminists, who ultimately are all about in their different shades and colours, ending sexual violence, representing and protecting women for the absolutely disgusting acts of Oxfam aid workers who were meant to be protecting and serving people, who were guests in war-torn and devastated countries. And to now, during a month that is meant to be a happy, joyous occasion for many people, I'm sure, to use that in order to do a little bit of a rebrand, in order to do a little bit of a deflection of responsibility for its own terrible, terrible actions, to use very interesting animations to represent TERFs as bad, evil people who are out to destroy marginalized groups, when Oxfam is literally the epitome of doing that itself. Not only has this created more animosity toward trans people on Twitter, especially the very, very extreme, horrible, derogatory and deplorable and bigoted attitudes of some have really emerged. It's it's also contributing to this increased lack of any understanding or any middle ground between these two extremes. The majority of people are not on these two extremes. It really is very extreme. But unfortunately, they are the loudest voices and they are making the most noise and they are getting the most attention. And they're also represented on both sides by incredibly wealthy individuals who clearly have nothing better to do with their time except get invested in this identity politics, which gives their life meaning 
and makes them feel less guilty about, I don't know, profiting from capitalism. So the animosity between identity groups is exacerbated. And I think it's really time for individuals who are really and who really care about marginalized people of all shapes and sizes and demographics to actually start looking at the facts, to actually start talking to the other side. Because data shows that currently we are far more accepting of trans people, of gay people, of lesbians, of LGBTQ plus people, of black people, of immigrants even, than we are of fat women. Literally. If you are fat, if you are obese and you are a woman, you are at a bigger disadvantage than probably anybody in the modern world right now in terms of employment, in terms of discrimination. And that's a whole other issue in itself with the whole issue of fat activists really just not helping anyone. But the premise is the same. Compromises need to be made in order to move forward. And right now, nobody is willing to compromise because nobody has any incentive to compromise, especially when the voices of authority, like businesses, like corporations, like charities, like Oxfam, are merely sowing the seeds of increased animosity, of increased absolutist thinking. We honestly need to do better because this is getting incredibly exhausting. It's exhausting to see and to have people constantly talking about identity all the time. It's exhausting to have people caring about the most minuscule, insignificant things when there are real profound issues in modern societies and in the world. The housing crisis, the cost of living crisis, increased apathy toward democracy and the electoral system within representative democracies renewable energy and all the problems that that is creating for a lot of people in this world. I'm definitely not alone when I say that I truly hate it here. And I mean, I truly hate it here. We need to stop vesting our interests and our anger in these businesses, in these corporations and charities. We need to stop letting them dictate the conversation about things that in the grand scheme of things really do not matter. That in the grand scheme of things could be resolved if we sorted out the big grand scheme of things. There are incredible people working in charities. There are absolutely phenomenal people working for and in Oxfam. But there have also been people and likely still are people getting away with a lot of terrible and criminal behavior in the name of charity. So Oxfam do a hell of a lot better but I think we all need to do better as well. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please don't call me a turf. I'm not a turf. Please don't call me a something unaliver of trans people because I'm not at all. I am very pro-trans people existing. I'm very pro all people existing. I do not care about your little idiosyncratic qualms with my terminology because, I don't know, you read a book. Thank you and I appreciate all of you, even those of you who do not like me considerably and I'll see all of you very soon in the next one.